So they're asking you to represent the fourth one. Number four. Add more lines and unit length and dots to figure three. So you can see that they're all developed from each other. Because if I, if I look at, uh, let, let me mark this one up. If I look at figure two, I'm seeing figure one. See figure one here? So basically there was a figure one and I did a few things to it and create figure two. If I look at figure three, I'm seeing figure two because this is figure two. That's figure two. And then basically you could see what is added to it. It's this part that is added to it all the time. This part I'm putting in blue. That part is added to it, to the previous, basically. So there's something you're seeing there. It's added to the previous. So we just need to add that right now to get that extra piece, basically. So you're going to put that there. Put on a little dots, you know. And then just finish that shape. You put on the dots. And you, you get the full shape basically by just adding that. Um, we can just look for stuff, look for what is added. If there's a common thing added, subtracting, what? You have to look, you understand? So in this one, now you're looking at 8, 16, 24. I could see that they're adding 8 right here. 8, 16, 24. So this is 32 based on what I'm seeing going down right now. So they're adding 8 to that. And, and um, even the next one over here. So there are some part of it that you can pick up. All right, what they add here? They add um, 8 plus 6, 6. This is adding 6. So this is 26. So to get these two marks here, you could follow a certain pattern and you're done. But they're not going to set it up for you to be doing it forever. So they, they, they have levels in the question. So some persons who are looking for a pattern, you could see it right there. Um, what they will call a knowledge pattern. Okay, you could quickly see you're adding eight, they're adding six. But they're going to skip out now. So it's like you reach 86. What could have been this? What could have been that? So what you're required to do now is to now figure out how. So the only thing I could say to you is there is a direct relationship between your first column all the time and your second column. There is a direct relationship, meaning something happened to one and it turns into eight. Something happens to two and it turns into 16. Um, something happened to three and it turns into 24. Something happened to four and it turns into 32. Something. So whatever that is, whenever you know this, you could figure out what goes there. Or if you know this, you could find out what goes there, the reverse of it. So you still have to pick up what is happening. All right? So you could look. Now, also, let me change the marker. There is, number one is the boss. Like the first column is the boss. There is something happening from one coming all the way to here. That means from the first column to the third column, there is a direct, direct relationship going on. You have to figure out that. So in other words, you want to study what is happening from one that it turn into eight, and then two turn into what, 14, and then three turn into 20. And then when you reach there, you probably could figure out what to do with 86 to go backwards. Because when you know what moved from one to eight, and two to 14 and three to, it's the same thing. And it's one thing affect. So in other words, there is one thing that affects column one. Let me, let me label column one, column two, column three. There is one relationship between column one and two. 
for every, every peer that you see is the same thing that happens. But there is another thing that happens from one to three. But everything from one to three will be affected the same way. And everything on one and two are affected the same way. So you need to figure out what's going on. So let's figure out one to three. So this is if. If you find out that, hold on, let me rub off this. Let us say you find out <clears throat> that there is a common difference between the things. Like you said, they are adding six. It's, it simply means that the difference between two consecutive terms is six. Agree? If yeah. they are adding six. So whenever you realize that they are doing something like that, whether they're adding six, adding one, adding two, whatever. If there is a common difference, I could give you something that could work all the time. And so this is not CXC work, but they still could do it. They don't care. All right. So I'm just showing you how to get this out. Now, if they're not adding six, you're on your own to try to figure out. All right. But as long as they're adding a common thing, and I don't mean adding six. I mean, if they're not adding the common thing all the time, you can't use this. You write down the first one. You put a plus sign, open bracket, you're going to have n minus one every time. Every time. So this is something you have. The first one you write, which is eight. Plus, and then you have n minus one. And then you're going to put the thing that is you see being added right there. So you notice it's multiplying to that. Let's clear it up. Eight is there. Six times n give you six n. 6 times negative 1, negative 6. Simplify this. You notice you'll get 6n plus 2. Look, 6n by itself, but the 8 and the minus 6 will give a plus 2. This is saying that to move from stage 1, which is column 1, to column 3, it is 6 times any number in column one, and you add two, and you get the one in column three. Tell me. We're checking one to eight. Six times one? Six plus two? Eight. Check two to 14. Six times two? Twelve plus two? Fourteen. Let's check the last one. Times three? 18 plus 2, 20. So you are seeing where this work, as in, this is what work in terms of moving from figure one to perimeter of figure or column one to column three. So it is six times anything over this side and then add two and it gives you the respective one all the way in column three. So if you realize that that is the formula that works, and you have 86, how will you go to column one from 86? Think backwards. Because if I'm moving from column one to column three, and I'm using six times any number in column one and add two, do the reverse. Subtract two this time and then divide by six. Because this is six times n, which is n is any number that I want to find. And then I add two. And it will move from one to three. I'm, I'm saying to get from column three to one, you're going to do the reverse, which is it will start by minus in two. Yes, so you'll take two now, and whatever you get, you're going to get 84. Then you're going to divide by six. I'm saying you're doing the inverse. The 14 is the number, but you couldn't have found it unless you understand how you move from column one to column three, and then you go the reverse. I'm just saying. One is now, how do you move from column one to column two? So remember now, we found out that this is 14 already. So how would you get that now? You simply multiply by eight. So sometimes it is very simple in the end, sometimes. So when it is simple, don't try to be difficult. So that... Six and plus two, sir. Yes, yeah, so this, this is a 6n plus 2. For any figure where n is greater than, so all right, pay attention to their 
the text for any figure where n is greater than one all right for any figure where n is greater than one and we're talking about n is from the first column all right so they are saying apart from number one that means they are saying e e ignore this one ignore that one apart from number one they are saying this the dots and the dots is b so b there for that which is the second column is greater than p which is the third column they are saying if you look second column is greater than the third column for everybody ignore the first one let's look 16 14 24 20 32 26 112 80 Six. So you could see that the middle one is bigger than the um, than the third one. Second column is always bigger than the respective third, right? So they are saying that to you. No problem. The question says, determine the value of n for a figure in which the difference between d and p is 36. In other words, then, what is represented by D, 8N? What is represented by P, 6N plus 2? This is a binomial, so I'm going to have to do this to it. Be careful because what you don't want to do is to apply the negative only to the, only to the 6N and forget that it's going to affect the positive 2 because it's, it's the P thing that you're minusing and the, the P is, is a double thing called a binomial. So in other words then, you set up the thing like this. In other words, you are saying D minus P should give me 36. I have an expression for D. I have an expression for P. No problem. So we're suggesting that 8N minus 6N minus 2 is equal to 36. N, yeah, this is 2N. So now you're going to have to add 2 to both sides. 8N equal to 38. And now you divide this by 2. To get n and equal 19. So this is suggesting that the 19th figure that will happen. 